What is good, Internet? JB back here with some more Pokemon Unite tier listing. And today we're going to be checking out the tier list for the Freezing Rush slash Darkrai release patch. And some interesting things have happened. But before we get into that, make sure you guys are subscribed and like the video if you enjoy the content. I would really appreciate both of those things. And I will quickly go over the tiers for things that did not get patched. And then we will go over the things that did uh, receive balance updates towards the uh, later half of this video. Give me one second as I cough my brains up because, well, it's fall and I have bad allergies. All right, let's get things started. We're going to go tier by tier and just go through our S tier, then down. Actually, let's start at the bottom. So we have, because uh, I don't know, it's just more fun. Start from the bottom, go to the top, something like that. I don't know. Either way, uh, we have Sableye, uh, Greedent, and Duraludon in our D tier. These characters need something. They're bad. Um, I still don't know why people think Duraludon's good. I will never understand it. I mean, I kind of like Dragon Pulse a little bit, but, you know, look at all the uh, the really strong characters in the game and then look at uh, good old Flash Cannon. It's just why, why do people play that build when it loses to every single melee character in the game? But hey, you guys do you. You continue to do your 60,000 damage and die. Uh, Greedent, self-explanatory. It's fine. It has its moments. But in the role of a defender, doesn't really do anything. In the role of a speedster, it's kind of okay. That's its best role. It's just running around being annoying. And then in terms of like the all-arounders, like it kind of fits into that weird niche role of kind of being all three. And it doesn't really do anything better than all-arounders in terms of brawling. So I don't know. Greedent needs a little bit of something and then Sableye. This character just gets picked if you're trying to lose games. Um, there's like one in every 100 Sableyes that know what they're doing. It actually helps stun people in team fights. Other than that, the char character is just completely griefing every single time I see it. So D tier. Moving on to our C tier, we have Dodrio, Gudra, Azu, um, Dark Urshifu, um, and then Phalanx and Scizor. And I should say this is based on the patch before this one. Uh, so this is how they were performing then. Uh, this is, I, I believe, I, where I had them ranked their own Armor Rouge release. I don't think I've done anything uh, in between then in terms of tier list. I haven't, uh, but uh, yeah, there hasn't been any patches since then. So yeah, this is what they were on Armor Rouge release. And uh, I think I will go ahead and bump up Dark Bear, the B tier. That just seems incredibly disrespectful. I don't know why I had it down there. Let me go ahead and look at my old tier list. I haven't pulled up. Yeah, 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 no, it was B tier. Okay, I was going to say, that was that is an incredibly disrespectful placement, but it was B tier in my uh, Armor Rouge tier list. I have it over on the other screen. See uh, our guy down there? B tier. But um, yeah, that no, was my bad for misplacing it. Uh, but these, the rest of these characters, I think that's pretty fair. Dodrio gets countered by every single character in the game that can just, you know, get its sprint gauge to zero. And if Dodrio doesn't have a sprint gauge, it it's useless. But there will also be games where Dodrio doesn't get stunned, doesn't get countered by everything in the game, and can actually do what Dodrio does, run around and cause havoc. But I don't know, man. It's, it's hard for me to put a character that, like I said, can get countered by literally every single other Pokemon in the game, especially these really good defenders, these really good brawl characters, and, you know, these stun mages. Like... Having these characters in the game uh, just really hurts Dodrio, and it's not so great against them. If you have a right matchup, yeah, you can still do stuff, but it's very few and far between the other right matchup. Gudra, I think Gudra's better than this personally, but I think my uh, rationale for putting it in C tier is I wanted to put at least one defender in C tier, but screw that. Uh, Gudra is better than C tier, so I'm bumping it up to B tier. Uh, Gudra's just strong, man. It, it does a lot of damage. It doesn't really do things a defender does, but it is better at you know all around ring than Greedent is, and it's better than all around ring than some all arounders. Hence why I bumped it up above some of these characters. But uh, none of these Pokemon are bad outside of the D tier characters that they just think, you know, in terms of power level, there's some that are better than others. But yeah, we, we move Gudra up. I, I don't know. I, I like Gudra. It's very strong, very tanky, but nowhere near as broken as some sections of the uh, the bad players will have you believe. Uh, then we have Azu. I think Azu is fine. It just falls off a cliff after like level 10. Like, would you rather have a level 10 Azu or a level 10 Mimikyu? I'll wait. Um, yeah, Mimi Azu is fine early, really dominant for like the first few levels until other characters get their moves because it does evolve at four, it gets an attack and, you know, can kind of dominate early. But once other characters get online, Azu just doesn't compare. So C tier. Phalanx. Phalanx is a character I really want to believe in. I love beat up Ironhead. I think it is one of the most underrated builds in the entire game, but that's just mostly because people don't know how to play against it and you just absolutely delete things. Uh, it's a really good backline diver. Uh, underratedly bulky, you get a lot of shields from it. So I think it's better than a lot of people give it credit for, but I do think there are other alternatives that are simply better. So I'm going to put it in C tier. And then Scizor is just entirely matchup dependent. Scizor is really good if there are no special attackers on the other team. If there are a bunch of physical attackers, like Scizor is actually pretty good against Seru, Mimikyu, you know, 
a little bit. Um, you know, I was gonna say Umbreon, but then I'm like, yeah, no, it's not good in Umbreon because Umbreon just tanks you. But like, it, it's good against like some characters. Like, it can bully a Blissey. It can bully an Eldegoss to some extent. It can, you know, fight well against a Crustle or a Metagross. But like, you, the second you put a Chandelure on the enemy team, or the second you're trying to fight a Slowbro, or the second you're trying to fight like, you know, a Lapras or a Gudra, like Scizor just doesn't really, you know, have the legs to stand. God forbid, you know, it runs into like a Sylveon or a, you know, Venusaur, or, you know, any other mage. Like, you know, we'll get the Nine Tails later, but yeah, no, it's, it's very, 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 very matchup dependent. And if you have a bad matchup, you're going to have a bad time. So I'm going to put it below some of the others that are a little bit less matchup dependent. And then we move on to our B tier where we have Mr. Mime, Gengar, uh, Absol, Zero Aura, Scyther, Gudra, who just got moved up, we already talked about, Lapras, Dark Bear, Garchomp, Dragonite, Serena, Aegislash is the name of that Pokemon, Tyranitar, Cinderace, Greninja, Espeon, Mew, and Inteleon. So, you know, it's crazy that, ah, uh, you just, you're lazy, you put the characters in Beater, or, you know, just, that's kind of how the game is balanced, as my dog apparently also has uh, seasonal allergies as she hacks up along behind me. Hopefully you guys didn't hear that, she's fine. Uh, but let's go ahead and get things started with Mime. I think it's totally solid in terms of being a Defender Support Hybrid. I just think that role is completely carried by Wigglytuff, and Mr. Mime is fine. Respectable damage, respectable stuns. It's just I would rather have almost any other support, but I'm never upset if I see a Mime on my team. It's a good character. Gengar, same thing. It's always been. If you get a snowball, if you get a lead early, you can do things, but otherwise, you're just sort of there. You're just sort of existing. Um, yeah, really, really player-based dependent. I think middle of the pack is fine for Gengar. Same thing with Absol. Like, if you snowball a game, you're doing fine. You're carrying all game, but, you know, does struggle a little bit more against some bulkier targets, whereas Gengar has a little bit of a better time against some of the uh, S-tier defenders and the like, because, you know, Hex is actually really good at shredding tanks. Absol is kind of just a, you know, backline assassin merchant is really only good at killing other squishies, so there's that. Zero Aura is a little bit of a hybrid of both. It can fight squishies, and it can fight uh, pretty well against tanks with Discharge, so B tier for that. I really like Zero Aura. I think it's one of the more slept on Pokemon in the game. I've loved Discharge. It's always been one of my favorite builds, so I'm going to put it B. Scyther is a tough one. I kind of want to move it down to C, simply because I just, I never see a Scyther. When have you ever seen a Scyther? But on the very rare instance I do, they're usually pretty decent, so I'm going to give it the respect to put it B tier, but I just, I never see this Pokemon. Let me know the last time you guys actually saw a Scyther in your game. Uh, Lapras, I think Lapras is another one of the most slept on characters in the game. Really tanky, obviously not as tanky as it used to be. I really wish they would give it a little bit of something, like even just a little bit of healing back on his boosted would be a nice change to it. Uh, just, you know, a little bit of oomph just to give it something to work with, because like it is, you know, not as tanky as some of the other defenders, certainly. And then, you know, damage is fine, still really solid damage, but I just, you know, just, just a little bit of love for Lapras. But otherwise, I think it's completely slept on, still really good damage still. Pretty good kit overall. Then we have Dark Bear. Dark Bear didn't get any changes. Water Bear did, which we'll get to later. Um, good secure. Really good at punching things. It's fine. Garchomp, still doing Garchomp things. Really good A-presser. Evolves to level 9. Only problem with the character. Dragonite. I think Dragonite has a case to be moved up to A tier. Just because Outrage is really strong right now. But then again, it's kind of just a solo queue merchant. Um, it's really good at, you know, just putting up big numbers against defenders because it, you know, just punches things. But it's also pretty frail. Eh, Hyper Beam is still really good. You can talk me into A tier if you really want to, but I'm not really going to split hairs over it. I'm just going to leave Dragonite in B. You want to move it up, you can. It's my tier list, though, and I'm lazy. <laughs> Serena. So Serena, um, I guess, got a bug fix to where it... So it used to be able to ult unstoppable things, which is nice, but then that was a bug, so they fixed that. And now it can... Uh, what was the bug fix it got? It can uh, ult Charizard now. So, yeah, uh, Serena's B tier. Nothing really changed about it. Um, they kind of got some bug fixes, but like if they would have just let it uh, ult unstoppable targets, it would have been good. But unfortunately, they take away everything we love. Uh, next up, we have Aegis Slash. Good character, strong, fine carry. It's still, you know, just middle of the road all around her. Not a lot to see here. Tyranitar, you can talk me into moving it up. You can talk me into moving it down. I do think it's a little bit slept on, so I'm just going to leave it in B. Um, you know, it's also part of the reason, like, you can talk me into moving it up, moving it down. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, but, yeah, it's fine if you get your levels early. Same thing. It's always been with Tyranitar. Strong if you're ahead. Strong if you have a level lead. But, you know, if you're stuck at Pupitar at, you know, four minutes, what are you doing? So, yeah, it still has those moments. Cinderace versus the A button, one of the most underrated Pokemon in the game. I've been saying this for every patch ever. I'll put it in B tier just because I do think there is like a... Uh, I did think there was like a power difference between Cinderace and Dragapult uh, and Decidueye. So I put it in B tier, but like, dude, 
Cinderace is so, so, so slept on. I'm going to leave it in B, but this character is good. Like, it, it, it is. Um, we have Greninja next. I got the Battle Pass buffs, and it's still Greninja. Like, you could talk me into C tier. I'm going to leave it in B because I do think it is, you know, a step up from Duraludon. Eh, it, it's, it's good. Water Shuriken's fine. I just, I don't know. There's a million other good characters, so we're just going to go to Grin. Then we have Espeon. Still, Espeon still has broken passive. Good Unite move. Nothing changed. You, nothing really to talk about. Inteleon still misses everything. I don't, I realize I don't really need to talk about um, every character halfway through the video, so we're just going to keep moving on from things. Wigglytuff um, is a character you can talk me into moving into A+, and I kind of want to because I do think all the supports are just really, really, really good right now. So I am going to bump Wiggly up to A+. Because, uh, first off, you know, it really pairs well with, uh, this, this thing. And also, like, Q-Charm is just that good. Q-Charm is so, so, so busted. And that alone, I think, is worth A-plus too, so I'm going to give it A-plus. Every, uh, support in the game besides, um... Okay, mine got a little bit of the short end of this thing, but, yeah, pretty much every support is super good right now, so... Yeah, that works for me. Talon, still good. So does Talon things. Crustle, really good defender. Buzzwool. Buzzwool's an interesting one. I think it's still solid. I'm going to leave it in A. Mew2x doing Mew2x things. Uh, Metagross doing Metagross things. I think all these characters are still fine. I think Metagross is really slept on. So that's why I have it up. I think, yeah, I do think it is like just a little bit better. It has more tankiness. Has better be has a better middle game than like um, Hone Edge or Dublade. And uh, Gabite, I think it's better than those characters in the middle stage. Same thing with uh, Serena. And then I think it's, you know, just does a lot, you know, very similar burst damage to those characters. And yeah, I think it's really solid early game. I, I like Metagross a little bit more than, you know, the Garchomp, Dragonite, Serena, H Slash, certainly Titar. So yeah, I think it deserves a little bit of a bump over those guys. Then we get into our attackers, Gardevoir. Still really solid damage. Um, Good stuns. Very good Pokemon. Uh, yeah, this this was a mistake. Uh, Pikachu's stupid. Pikachu's stupid. And it's not even so much the Unite move. The Unite move is annoying, but the Volt Tackle is just so unfun to play against it's like it's top two most unfun things to play against in the entire game so yeah that, that was a that was an oversight by yours surely uh glaceon's still stupid can still lock onto you from across the map and do half your health so yeah dumb character uh then we have our friendly neighborhood chandelure really respectable damage top two worst unite move in the game only thing keeping it lower honestly but yeah, all of its damn all of its moves are really really strong just yeah kind of weak early but puts, pumps out some of the most damage in the game. A tier. Desi. Good secure. You can talk me into A+. Plus. I love Desi. You guys know I love Desi. But I'm going to leave it in A for now. Uh, then we have LD in A+. Plus. It's still Logos. All these supports just so good. Healing is super underrated. Uh, they just never get played. And if people played them more. Like if. I, I don't understand pick rates. Because I, I'm going to go on a rant. This is something I've gone on a rant before. Let me pull up Unite API real quick. It might take me a second. Because this uh, website doesn't like to look. If we head over to uh, good old Unite API, uh, you'll see the pick rates. Uh, Umbreon's way up there. Then we have Eldegoss at 24% is the most pick support. Blissey is up there. Comfey down below that. Clef below that. Hoopa barely gets picked. Uh, Sableye barely gets picked. Bime gets picked even less than Sableye. And yeah, I, you know, you, you see, you see Eldegoss up here with like what 24% pick rate. No, I I play this game a lot. I never see Eldegoss in my game. Well, I see Eldegoss on the enemy team. I never see Blissey. I'm like, I never see supports, and that's a problem. I never see supports or defenders, really, unless, you know, me or one of my duo queues are playing it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I never see supports. People need to play them more. It's something I've talked about a billion times, something I will continue to talk about. If you think you're too good to play supports, you're part of the problem. So yeah, play supports, they're broken. Uh, Miascarada, it's fine. Broken passive, carrying it. I think the passive is one of the most just stupid things in the game. Slowbro, so Slowbro. Still best unite move in the game. Scald, Surf, both great. Amnesia, Telekinesis, is both solid. It's still Slowbro. Zacian. I don't really feel like you need to say anything there. Presses the A button. Good unite move. Really, really solid damage. Once again, it's a character that I think is uh, a lot of people forget about. Very good. Great secure. Very tanky. Very hard to take down. Obviously got nerfed a couple patches ago, but it's still really, 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 really strong. Venusaur, all of its builds are good. Uh, well, aside from, you know, the obvious, like, uh, Sludge Bomb Pedal Dance, but Venusaur's just great. Top tier Unite move, top tier damage, top tier sustain with um, Pedal Dance Giga Drain, even though the build doesn't really get played a lot, it's still really good. Sylveon, we had an A+. I'm only to bump Sylveon down. I think Sylveon 
Um, I, I think it's kind of the consensus at this point that the rework to Hyper Voice isn't exactly great. It's not you know, that it's, you know, significantly worse, but it's not very good. I do think Mystical Fire is a lot better and Mystical Fire is quite solid. However, I think I'm just going to bump it down to A tier because it's not as good as I thought it was in the previous patch. And then B2Y, it's B2Y. All right, S tier. Oh, don't get me started on these Pokemon. Comfe, it's Comfe. Moving on. Leafeon, how on earth did this Pokemon avoid nerfs? I will never understand it. This character is so stupid. Razor Leaf just shreds. Razor Leaf should not be as strong as it is early. It needs a severe attack stat nerf early game and even just damage to Razor Leaf early game. Like, just needs to be lowered. It's insane how strong that move is. And then, as a YouTuber, I am a Leafeon Unite move magnet. 90% of Leafeon Unite moves get used on me in my games. So, I hate that Unite move because it's up all the time. Leafeon needs nerfs, has stupid mobility. It's an EV passive. It evolves at level 4. All EVs should evolve at level 5. Change my mind, but. I don't know, dude. Leafeon's dumb. Easiest S tier of the video. Trevenant, still top tier defender. I think it's probably the second best defender in the game behind Umbreon, which, of course, still S tier. Ho oh. Controversial take. I'm pumping Ho oh down to A tier or A plus tier. The only thing good about Ho oh um, is Fire Spin. Or the best thing about Ho oh, rather, is Fire Spin. Its ult is good. Um, one thing I will say stop banning this Pokemon. It does not need to be banned as much as it is. Like, it, I believe its ban, ban rate is still like top three. It's top five ban, right? Like, it does not need to be banned this much. Oh, oh is not this good. I'm assuming that will change, you know, uh, in, you know, the coming days as this guy starts to rocket up the, uh, the ban rate. But, uh, yeah, oh, oh it's like mean, it has a good night move, obviously. But nine times out of ten, like people either don't realize they're revived or just die again instantly. It's night move is like not as good as people think it is. It's not like this game changing thing, like. You know, it's definitely good, obviously, but it's not like, you know, game breaking. And then, like I said, Fire Spin is the best part of its kit. Second Fire is fine or whatever. The, yeah, second Fire, whatever. The, why can I not think of the actual name of the move? God, I'm stupid. It's not Sacred Fire. What the hell is it? Sky Attack. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, Sky Attack is great. Um, I'm a big fan of Flamethrower. It's fine. Has a really, 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 really low cooldown. And then I think Fly is kind of a meme, but the rest of his moves are really good. It's very tanky, has a great passive healing up outside of battle, but I don't know. Uh-oh. Not as good as people think it is. Uh, these two characters, um, hold on. I wasn't going to do this, but let's um, add a row above real quick. All right, so we have the how the fuck did they not get nerfs here? And, um, yeah, um, I don't, yeah, we'll, we'll throw Pikachu in there. We'll throw Pikachu in there. I cannot fathom a world where Cerule Edge and Mimikyu were, were allowed to get through this patch without nerfs. Mimikyu has been so broken for so long, it's insane how strong this character is and how much damage it does just right off rip. As soon as it gets level five, the game just basically ends. Um, like Shadow Claw is so stupid. Play Rough is dumb. Doesn't do as much damage, obviously. Play Rough, but like it's so annoying getting full invincibility for like multiple seconds. Being able to just dodge every Unite move in the game is so stupid. Then we get to Sorrel Edge, which you can also dodge everything in the game because Phantom Force is on such a low cooldown. It's up all the time. Has a broken Unite move. Uh, just again, stupid damage. Cycle Cut is also just really good, even though it doesn't get played because Bitter Blade is so broken. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? What color do you want to make? Let's make it blue. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand how either of those characters are getting nerfed, and we already talked about Pikachu a little bit, so, uh, yeah, Maridon, um, does stupid amounts of damage, pretty much all I need to say about that. Let's move on to the, uh, the things in the actual patch, shall we? You know, we're, what, 20 minutes into the video, or just now getting into the patch notes? Good job, JB, you fucking suck at this. Alright, uh, starting off, we're gonna be going off the, uh, Unite DB, uh, you know, order here in which they have the patch list. So they start with Ninetales. I think Ninetales shoots up straight to S tier. This character, if you watch some of my previous tier lists, um, I have been very high on this character for a long time, thinking it's insane. And then they went ahead and gave it insane defense buffs. So it's now very bulky all throughout the game. Uh, actually, no, starting at level, yeah, starting at level four, it gets progressively more bulky throughout the entire game. They cut its passive timer from eight seconds to four seconds, which is just one of the dumbest changes i think i've ever seen in this game not i don't want to be hyperbolic when i say that but you guys know 
how much I hate Ninetales. It's a stun machine, and they gave it its AoE unavoidable passive that stuns on a four second cooldown. What are we doing? Like, that is one of the most absurd changes I've ever seen. And then they gave, you know, Avalanche and uh, Blizzard some cooldown reductions. Who cares about that? That doesn't matter. I mean, it's fine, but like, the bulk makes uh, every build better, obviously, but it really makes the Aurora Veil build better. And then the, the snow warning, the passive buff is like genuinely one of the stupidest buffs I think this game has ever done. Like, that is beyond broken. All right, moving on, we have Machamp next. Machamp got some interesting changes. So Machamp um, can now, uh, it has a really solid damage buff to close combat, but it's Unite move, you just press it and it goes. Previously you had to press it, you could, you know, line it up and then activate it. It has its moments where it's better or worse, but I personally do think it is an overall really good change. I previously had Machamp in C tier down here with these guys, which I think was fair, but I think this is a, I think these buffs are enough to bump it up to B. I don't think it's anything special, uh, but close combat is really strong. You can run the, um, the submission close combat build, please don't do that, but you get like perma pretty much permanent unstoppable, which can be nice against, you know, shit like Ninetales and uh, Pikachu, but it's still submission Machamp, which is top five troll moves in the build or troll builds in the game. But yeah, that's a, uh, I don't know, it's whatever. Uh, Charizard got uh, nerfs to its basic attack and nerfs to Fire Blast and nerfs to its Unite move. So previously I had Charizard in, uh, I had it in S tier because you know it's just it's unite it's really only a unite move button but it's unite move is really good but i think we're gonna bump it down to i think probably a these changes are pretty significant because obviously the unite move uh nerf you know getting it less often it get went from 112 seconds to 130 seconds which is isn't really super significant but a, the uh, basic attack nerf does you know also nerf it's unite move they cut the damage ratio in half from 32 percent of your attack to 16 percent uh, and then just the base damage from 10 to 5. So they kind of really nerfed the basic attack, which is a lot. And then the movement speed reduction from Fire Blast, who cares? Uh, I'm going to put an A. This is tentative, though. It could still go up. It could be even go down. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Armor Rouge. Armor Rouge got some interesting changes. So Armor Cannon got pretty... Eh, it's not, not actually a huge Armor Cannon nerf. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, maybe like 10% damage overall. It doesn't look that much lower. The ratio is lower than 10% overall, but not a huge damage after that. Touch shot got buffed. Fire spin got reworked. So basically it's fire spin plus. Was previously fire spin plus is now regular fire spin. And then you just get more movement speed, I believe. Or no, you get a shield. Yeah, you get more of a shield with fire spin plus now. And then flame charge did get nerfed. You get less of a way less of a shield. Holy crap, they cut the uh, ratio in half and the damage in half. So that's a pretty significant nerf. I had Armor Rouge in a plus on its release. I'm going to bump it down to A. I think the character's still really, really strong. Um, still has like a lot of damage overall. And I don't think the uh, the nerfs to um, Armor Cannon were that significant. Still could probably get away pretty well with tank build. So I think A tier is fair. And then Rapid Strike or Shifu. So basically, how they nerfed it was you could previously with, um, I don't know if it was, you only needed seven Black Emblems or Black Seven and Energy Amp, but basically you could have um, Rapid Strike up 100% of the time. Now you can't do that. I had it in B tier, which was low, um, which was very, very low. This character is good. So I think A tier is fair because this change doesn't really do much. You can still, you can't quite have it up permanently, but it still does a lot of damage. I think A tier is fine for Water Bear. You can talk me into putting it lower or higher, but yeah, it was too low previously. I had it, I had to be previously, and I think that was low. I don't think this nerf was crazy significant, so I'm gonna just bump it up because I think I was wrong. It could be B, it could be C. It's not C, but it, I think it's probably B. But we're gonna leave it in A because I want to. All right, here's one of the biggest risers in the game. So previously we had Blastoise in C tier in the last patch, and that's just because it had really fallen off the damage was really low the tankiness wasn't there and the uh the stun build got nerfed well they fixed pretty much all of that the tankiness is way back it got huge defense buffs it got a cooldown um buff to hydro pump and surf so you have those back more often now and it also got a huge buff to rapid spin plus previously rapid spin plus was already a huge defense buff now it is an even bigger defense buff from uh base 350 uh defenses to our base 300 defenses to base 450 defenses so that's insane on Rapid Spin Plus. I think Blast Size goes from C straight back to A plus. You could even talk me into S, because Blast Size is already incredible back in the day. Like Blast Size has been one of the better Pokemon in Unite for a while. 
it finally had a couple patches where it wasn't killing it but i think you know it's just right back where it was so yeah that uh, blastoise is great again make blastoise great again they did next up we have del fox which got some nerfs to mystical fire fire blast and fire blast plus so it's just straight damage nerfs to fire blast and fire blast plus and mystical fire also got just straight damage nerfs i'm gonna be honest these nerfs don't look that significant just a couple percent on mystical fire like 30 base damage which isn't really that much fire spin plus did get hit pretty hard it got like 60 off its base damage and off its uh ratio of special attack same thing with fire blast like that's significant i mean fire spin didn't get touched i had it in s tier previously this might be enough to move it down to a tier but like i mean fire blast the fire spin mystical fire was already my preferred build and they barely nerfed mystical fire I'm just going to leave Delphox in S because I think it's probably still really, really good. Even if it won't get played as much as Ninetales or Pikachu, I think it's still incredible. So that's what we're doing. Dragon Ball Phantom Force got nerfed. So previously you had uh, 10 attack stacks that you could um, stack up. You got you get 10 KOs, you get plus, I think, 10 attack for each kill you get. So you get plus 100 attack. When I went from 10 to 6, so you can get plus 60 attack, which is still really strong. I previously had Dragon Ball as the best ADC in A tier. And I think it's probably still in contention for that. I'm going to move it down to... I had it in A plus previously. I'm going to move it down to A just to be more in line with the situation because I think it probably is more in line with the situation after that change because it's not quite as strong, but man, that A button still hurts real good. And that Unite move still real good. Just as good for securing as Spirit Shackle. You can talk me into A plus, but I think Dragon Ball is one of the more slept up Pokemon in the game. Snorlax is an interesting one. Got a huge buff to block plus, so you get a big uh, defense and special defense increase. Flow got buff, so you get um, movement speed for longer and just a whole lot of like just all of that. like i i don't i don't want to read all that you, you it's decreasing so you move faster at the start and the, the ratio yeah you you understand and they got a buff to yawn's cooldown which is already really good we had snorlax in b tier previously i don't think this is enough to bump it up to a tier so we're going to leave it in b i think it's they're fine buffs but snorlax was already pretty solid you can talk me into a yeah screw it. you can talk me into a Block was broken and they buffed block. I don't think block needed to be buffed. It's only block plus though, which I believe is a level 13 move. It's level 11 move. Who cares? I don't really care. I'm not gonna figure it out. All right, uh, Lucario. This is the most irrelevant change of all time. I mean, it is pretty relevant. They uh, they, they buffed exchange speed. They got, went from a nine second cooldown to a seven and a half second cooldown, which is fine. Add it B tier. It's staying in B tier. Um, I mean, yeah, if you miss your E speed, you get it back a little bit sooner. That's fine. It's still a seven and a half second cooldown. Doesn't really change a whole lot. It's it's it's, it's a nice quality of life buff, but not really much outside of that. Gyarados. Gyarados is an interesting one. I think this is one of the contenders for losers of the patch. I haven't seen this character in game to actually know how it plays since the uh, nerf, but they nerfed Dragon Breath, so your attack speed increase reduced from 60, 80, 100% to 40, 50, uh, 5, 70 based on the amount of targets hit. So you hit multiple targets. If you hit, like, a, like I said, three targets previously, you would have 100% attack speed increase. Now you only have 70, which is really strong. Um, it's still, you know, a lot of attack speed increase, but not quite as good as it was. Bounce got a cooldown nerf, which doesn't really do anything. They also got a damage nerf, which doesn't look that bad. 20% ratio, 40% base damage is, you know, it's a lot of, it sounds like a lot, but it's not really that much, especially with attack weight and stuff we had gyarados ranked in a plus i think a tier is still fine for it. i think it's probably still really good next up we have mammo which got an icicle crash nerf why did they nerf mammo swine mammo swine was finally good mammo swine was finally shining why did they, they do that to my boy uh but they nerfed its damage on its early game move icicle crash which uh five percent yeah that's not a huge increase actually but then they uh or decrease actually so icicle crash still is mostly fine um, you just might have to get a little bit better with your secures on it. And then uh, Earthquake got its cooldown increased from seven and a half seconds to nine seconds. Why why they why they why they why they train our boy Mammo like crap? I had it A tier previously. I think that's probably still fair. If we bumped up Snorlax for getting some significant buffs, I don't think we can bump down Mammoth Swan. I think Mammoth Swan is still really strong against some of these characters, so yeah, I think Mammoth Swan's still good. Uh, Zoroark got a cooldown buff to Night Slash and Night Slash Plus, getting a second knocked off of each of those. And then Faint Attack, uh, the better move, got a pretty sizable damage buff. Okay, that is a little bit crazy. Uh, Zoroark I had in uh, A tier. I think it stays in A tier. You can talk me into A plus, but 
Zorak's a character that heavily depends on the person playing it. If the character, or if the person playing it doesn't know what they're doing, then it won't do anything. But if you have a cracked Zorark, then you're gonna, it's gonna be like, it's gonna feel like you're playing as one of the craziest things in the game. So I'm just gonna split the difference, put it, and uh, keep it in A tier. I think that's fine. Oh, uh, Dragonite actually did get Outrage nerfs. I uh, forgot about that. So. Eh, still be here. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Cramorant dives cooldown went from one and a half seconds to two seconds, and then it's ammo recharge cooldown went from five seconds to six seconds. It wouldn't be a Pokemon Unite patch without a Cramorant nerf. We are so back, chat. I had an A tier previously. It's cooldown nerfs. Cooldown nerfs don't really move the needle for me one way or the other, unless it's like super significant. I'm going to still leave it in A tier. And then finally, we have the new guy, Darkrai. So this is a tale of two days. So if you would have asked me, uh, immediately after release where Darkrai would have been I would have told you down here I really really hated Darkrai on release Dark Pulse was obviously one of the worst moves in the game um, And I thought it's United move is bad. I don't think it's United move is great But then they did a thing where they decided to just buff the ever-living crap out of it and They uh, they might have made a mistake because this character is uh, just immediately broken uh, I don't know if we could technically put it in like how did they not get nerfed here because like it wasn't in the game so we're just gonna put it S tier but like it is on par with these guys. So we're yeah we'll, I mean we'll just we'll put it up there but you, just so it is in the highest tier but you you get what I'm saying. Oh uh, yeah they they buffed like its defenses it felt like it was paper thin and they gave it basically a hundred more defense late game you know scaling from level to level but it's like an average of like sixty more defenses late game a ton more HP a couple hundred more HP few hundred more HP actually depending on what level you're at um late game buffed its defenses they buffed everything about it your damage over time when people are sleeping went crazy uh the boosted attack is so strong like yeah th they made a mistake um they need to find a happy medium and this has always been the problem with speedsters is one tweak and they go from middle of the road to broken well dark red went from really bad which i mean if i'm being honest with myself it was probably more like here on release it's probably like b tier on release to best character in the game gonna have like an 80 plus percent ban rate i would imagine uh but you know you can abuse it at the start of the next season which is starting pretty soon uh yeah, yeah dark dark pulse is insane or no dark dark pulse is still kind of mad but um yeah nasty plot is absolutely stupid it's basically leafy on aerial ace but special attack version you're just zooming around the map dark pole dark void excuse me that is the one i'm um, getting confused with they lowered the cooldown on that so you have it up pretty much all the time you're just spamming it putting people to sleep just deleting them with a boosted attack yeah they made, they made a mistake with that buff um dark ray it, need, it got it needed the emergency buff got it well now they need to do the emergency nerf again and just find somewhere like in the middle for it to be obviously in the ideal world everything is balanced but we don't live in an ideal world we live in a world where uh these five characters um exist and if you ran like you know this comp you know take one of these guys out for Umbreon, you win every single game. So there's that. Um, yeah, we live in that world. I mean, I guess we can, yeah, we can go ahead and throw Umbreon and have it not get nerfed here. Why not? <laughs> it's my tier list. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, that's my tier list. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything. Let me know where you think Darkrai ranks. And uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys. I'm going to stream the season reset, whatever that is. I don't know exactly what day it is. I think it's, I think it's Thursday. It's Monday. I think it's Thursday. Probably Thursday night. Whatever it is, I'll be streaming it. So come hang out for that video tomorrow on who knows what. And I will see you all then. Thank you guys for watching. Take it easy.